to say geniuses out there that I consider like a mad scientist type of intellect. Uh, I love having you on the show, Matt. So thank you for, for coming back. Sure. No worries, guy. No worries. Um, glad, glad to do it. I, you know, I've had so many guests on my show, uh, you know, both on YouTube and on my back channels. And I know this is going to go pretty deep, uh, but it looks like we're right in the smack dab middle of this war. You know, it looks like we're, well, it's really starting to escalate. It looks like there's no slowing down. Both sides are going all in. And uh, I know you've created that software. Are you still using that software? What What can you tell us, Cliff? I'll let you have the floor. What What are you seeing pan out right now? What are you seeing happening? What What's going on? What from your okay? So, so here's you... the thing. Um. Uh. All right. So, uh, my software has a a certain emit uh, a certain bit of um um alarm showing right okay uh so my software has a, a range of values for um uh, building and uh release tension okay so there's two different types of emotional tension building tension where you're getting ready to fight and then the release where you're releasing it right so like Terry Cassidy the other day was releasing all over you. <laughs> okay, so so anyway. A reminder. Uh, yeah, so so here's the thing. So the the top end of my scale is of the delta between the building tension and the release tension is 585. It sometimes is only the difference is only in the threes. Okay. Now these are just numbers. The numbers are not in and of themselves meaningful because they, they change slightly as I adjust numbers on the words. But what's important is the, the level of the range has been consistent since, uh, more or less consistent. I've had to enlarge the range a couple of times uh, since say like 2001, all right? Okay. Uh, so now we have a situation where the Delta is not within that range. It's out here at 81 point something. Okay, so 13 times higher than our usual. That is the the, the the tension in which, are you talking about like, you can tell by the chatter on the internet, correct? Correct, that, correct. My, my software is going through and, and picking up language that's being leaked, picking up the emotions, and, and it gets it right. And it gets it like that, and we'd have building tension, and then you'd have release of that language, right? And so what we're looking at, now this is release, uh, that's like an outpouring, you know, grief, suffering, wailing, all of that kind of shit, right? It could also be happiness. Okay, that's release. Partying, let's party. That's release language. Now, right now, it's hovering at, at 81 something. And, and so this would be like uh, looking like building tension, release tension, building tension, release tension, building tension, release tension. Wow. Right, right. So here's the thing. Is there a way to, to tell between the two, between the 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 the, the release? Uh, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's 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 release language that is dominating. Is there like what kind of release it is? Is like is um, there a way? I don't think it's a party. Okay, uh, so I I think it's pretty negative. Um, I get confirmation uh, on my stuff by watching uh, people that are psychic. That, uh, that have proven records as like remote viewers or psychic intuitives or whatever, right? And all over the internet, no matter what language, um, Iranian, Russian, uh, Estonian, Albanian, all of the psychics are picking something up, all right? And my buddy, Dick Allgaier, and I'm gonna talk to him tomorrow and we're gonna do a video on this. He and his remote viewing group are also picking up something way big. Now, here's the thing with this. I'm not going to get into the details on his, but he has talked about this on JC's um, on Beyond Mystic channel. Uh, they had a remote viewing, Dick and his group. Everybody goes to remote view and they all get this same subject, but it's nowhere near what, what, the, what the question was. And so everybody thinks, huh? You know, we, we screwed up. Something went wonky. So they do it again. And it happens again. They, everybody gets the same thing, but it's nowhere near what they were, the question they were being asked. So, so basically what happens is, is like this. If you're a psychic and you go out and you want to, or a remote viewer, okay? So remote viewers are like, in my opinion, they are the black belts of psychic, okay? They're trained, all right? So they train themselves in a martial arts fashion 
to get better at their craft, whereas a psychic just goes along, right? And doesn't really know. They never examine it and so on. They're honed in. Correct. Okay, so the remote viewers here are saying that they want to go and look at this target. Here's the target. And that's where they, they're being sent by the remote viewing tasking. But their view is always pulled over this way, no matter what they do. Okay. And it's because this thing is so damn big that it overshadows their ability to get at that. Um, and, that would and, be some kind of event. Correct. Okay. So here's the thing. I'll let Dick characterize it tomorrow in his group and stuff, right? But conceptually, this is the same thing that's happening with that 81 number. Okay, we're going to have some event that's going to have so much release language following it that it's going to dominate everything. And so I'm saying that this is between 3 and 13 times as emotive as 9-11. Holy shit. And bigger than Lahaina? So... Yeah. If you really think about this, we and everything that's happening with the house hearings, the, the the walls are closing in on them. They're going to start playing. You don't think so? They don't care about that. They don't care about that. That's a minor little ripple to but, them. But they, but they have to make some kind of big move, correct? They have to make... No, no, no. Okay, so in my understanding, that would not be accurate, okay? That what's driving everything is the dollar, the money. Okay, and so here's here's the deal. Uh, all of the financial records that would have exposed all of the deep state and everything were in Building 7. And what happened to it? Magically, it disappeared, right, as along with all the records. And we had that event that brought in the Patriot Act. So I would not be surprised right now that there was some uh dictatorial law that that uh, you know 2000 pages of crap that they're trying that's already ready to go for whatever this event is okay i believe that it's my thinking that this event is going to be triggered is triggered uh in the future by events that are going on now relative to the financial situ situation and that outcome is for sure already so it could be some kind of a financial apocalypse like, uh, well, no. So, so no, uh, it, it wouldn't be like that. Okay. So the financial apocalypse is already happening. Um, so this is, this is a little tricky. So stick with me on this. All right. Um, hyperinflation is not an economic or a fiscal thing. Okay. It, you're going along, you got inflation at 40%. And then in one month, inflation could jump to 100 or 120 percent, okay? It doesn't happen because of how much money they're putting into the system at that stage. It is entirely a psychological uh, wave that sweeps through the population where they say, holy shit, my, this is not worth toilet paper. I've got to spend this thing right now and get some level of value out of it because net tomorrow it's going to be worth less. So if it took one of these to buy a sheet of toilet paper today, it'll take two or three of them to buy a sheet of toilet paper tomorrow. So I'd better spend it today. That's what hyperinflation is. It's this emotion, this tension, this building tension value around the value of the currency. And it just triggers. And the whole population within days, because one person starts panic spending, buying everything they can as though they were suddenly trying to hoard things, right? And the, the, the grocery store owner sees this, you know, uh, uh, you know, Mrs. Jones, you know, why are you buying three carts full of steaks? You know, that kind of thing, right? Um, exactly. Panic buying. And the panic starts to spread. I believe, And so the panic ultimately spreads up into the financial people. All right. And so they can't have the, the people that the Federal Reserve cannot have a hyperinflationary episode work through the population of the U.S. They could sort of deal with it if it worked through dollars that are outside of our country, right? They could manage that a little bit. It would cause big problems here. We'd get up to like maybe 60% inflation, but somewhere between like where we're at now, which is like 40% inflation and 60% inflation is the potential to trigger over to hyperinflation where everybody, as soon as you get paid, you spend it all that day. Okay, this has huge ramifications for a system that is run on credit, credit cards and electronics, because at the end of every month, when people got paid with paychecks or the end of every week, there's going to be a massive spike of spending. 
and then everything dries up in the rest of that week. And it really alters the nature of the social order. So the powers that be, the Federal Reserve, the mother weffers, they're fighting among themselves all the time. Our Federal Reserve right now is, is caught in a quandary. Do they save the try and save the Federal Reserve note and thus themselves, or do they pay attention to what Klaus Schwab and the mother weffers want to do? Um, it is my thinking that the upcoming hyperinflationary wave that could hit the U.S. has to be offset in a 9-11 kind of a fashion. They need an event to try and cover their ass. So I don't think we're talking about banks failing. I don't think we're talking about digital anything. I think we're talking about a physical attack, and I believe it'll probably be directed energy weapons because of the efficiency of that attack. Okay, so if we look how long, all right, so there was all kinds of um, magic, okay, so the Khazarian mafia employed thousands, thousands of Jewish witches prior to 9-11, and they worked the magic, right, and they worked it up for the, for the entire month of August and for the first 10 days of September. We watched this, those of us that, that tracked this shit online, we watched this happen. We didn't know what it, what it was going to lead to, but it led to 9-11. Okay, so it is my thinking. I was that work before 9-11? They were going all in for that. Okay. Correct. So they're trying to, to work the spiritual side, the financial side, the psychological side, the all of it together in a package. This is how you have to think holistically, right? And so they, in my opinion, they will have an event and they will try and capitalize on and control as much of their problems as they can with this one event. But to my way of thinking, all right, so my way of thinking is that, that uh, things are not static over time, that humans learn. Humans have an experience. We harden with time, right? And so uh, if you beat me every day for a week about the shoulders, my shoulders going to get pretty tough, right? On that, that next week, they'll be sore two weeks after that. You won't be able to beat my shoulders to any good effect at all because I will have toughened up. This is the nature of our reality. Okay, so my thinking is that, that this was 9-11, and that kept them going until 2020 um, on, their, on their plan, right? But we can't have another 9-11. Our emotional upheaval and stuff is way the hell up here already right. whatever so order, higher than that correct in order for them to control us they need to have something as i was saying between three and 13 times higher than 9 11 to try and extend that out into 2024 now bear in mind look how long they got with 9 11 we're up so high that all they're hoping to do is to control one more year so so you see their desperation That's there you go. Now let's discuss that. Okay, so I'm not of the opinion that they can do a nuke. All right, and here's why. Um, in order for a nuke to be used, they would have to involve several thousands of people. All right, and they're not in a position now where they can go around and clean up those several thousands of people afterwards that they don't talk. And look at how shaky everything is in terms of their uh, ability to ensure silence, right? You got all these whistleblowers, people that used to be down and dirty. They ain't getting paid, so now they're talking, right? Hey, right, right. And and everything, and they, they can't be uh, bribed anymore because the the paper is no good because it's all interconnected, and the paper doesn't have any purchasing power, right? And so, so what if you get a million dollars? Big deal, you know. They, you know, that's just not going to keep you silent that long, especially uh, at this level. This goes along with Juan O'Saban's event of Cuban Missile Crisis 2.0. Okay, let's stop right there, though. Okay, so that was nukes. Now, here's the thing about nukes. Um, a small nuke, uh, not like suitcase, but like a small nuke that could be used on a city requires a big airplane. It requires a crew. It requires fuel. There's paper trails left everywhere. There's people involved, there's airports, there's the potential for security that all is going to come back and bite them in the ass. And they're so desperate to control through this year that they don't want to deal with any kind of fallout in between from whatever the hell there is they're doing. And it's a cost issue. Okay, it costs you several, it costs you real money to bribe several thousands of people. 
even if they don't know why they're being bribed or what's going on. Um, it is easier to have a screen in China, Indonesia, Malaysia, India, the United States even, somebody sitting behind a screen pushing a button on a drone that releases a series of um, energy weapons. There's a cost to this, but it's far less than thousands of people loading a nuke. It's only maybe maybe 50 people. But wait, you're talking about direct energy weapons. Correct. But like, so what we, hung, what we saw in Lahaina, but they had to blame climate change on that. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. So here, track me on this. All right. So there's, there's three types of directed energy weapons. All right. There's the sonic one, and we're not going to really deal with that at this time, but there's the lasers, and then there's the um, uh, high power microwaves. Now, the, um, the lasers are part of the process, but the damage is done by the high power microwaves. The high power microwaves, though, have a failure. Oh, am I getting, I would think I'm getting a picture here. Uh, I don't. I don't know. It's going to be really magnificently uh, uh, violent. But here's here's my thinking. Okay. Uh, all right. So what the, what I think they're going to do uh, because of the nature of what I've got in my data, and maybe I have yet to talk to Dick, and I have yet to even watch his video that he sent me. We're on their debriefing. They're so kind to do that. Dick and his crew are just such nice guys. Um, but anyway, so here's what I think that's going to happen. Uh, we'll just say that down here there's a valley. And this is the target. In the place that, that I think this is going to happen, there's a pretty consistent cloud cover. What I think they're going to do is I think they're going to use a laser and they're going to, oops, hang on. They're, going to they're going to disrupt the such that your high power microwave can beam in through it. Because if a high power microwave starts beaming in and hits a high enough water level in the clouds, it does all of the damage and stuff up there. So my thinking, because of some of the stuff I've got in the data, is that this X right here, okay, so my description on this is this valley and mountains and other things that make me think of Cheyenne Mountain. Mm, shit. Denver Airport. And one other place I'm not going to go into. Um, okay, so let's just assume that I'm correct about this, that it's going to be one of these mountainous places. So I'm thinking that this attack that's going to take place is planned right now for central U.S. To, and, but they're going to blame it on a natural event. But it's not going to be climate change. It's going to be a meteor. It's going to be a natural system, everything. They're they're they they're gonna take I think right now. Here's the thing. Okay, so so my data sets have uh, have provided me hints, and that's all it is. Okay, just hints, just made me psychically tune in and think of these three particular places: Cheyenne Mountain and uh, the Denver Airport. Then there's this one other one that that would be really really bizarre. It has these kind of criteria in terms of what it looks like. But if they hit that one, it would break the backbone of the internet for some period of time, especially in the U.S. It would slice us into regions because of the place there has this particular set of equipment, right? And so it would be really strange. It would be like um, oh, the with the ten days of darkness. Correct. Only it wouldn't be ten days. It'd be like in the United States, it'd be like ten years because we don't have enough uh, replacement equipment. We don't have the people to do it. If they do this. Bear in mind, down here, it's going to look like a nuke hit, okay, because this directed energy weapon can just keep beaming on down there. Also, so grasp this, this high power microwave, you'll sometimes see it as HPW for just regular wave. The 9-11 towers, as they were falling, that's what caused the free fall and the dustification of the 9-11 towers. So they just sighted down on the towers, hit a button, and, and dissolved it on the way down. So there was 1.25 million tons of material in the towers. Do you know how much they hauled off? Do you know how much they actually hauled off? 40 Ooh. truckloads. 40 truckloads of material. Wow. What? So where, where did the 1.25 million tons go? It was turned into dust and, and gas. And so this is what I think is going to happen. Now, if this is the Denver airport, they're after whatever the hell is underneath it. 
Okay, so they would just keep going and going and going and going until there was just a big smoking crater in the ground. Because we also can say it would make sense also Cheyenne Mountain. Because correct, correct. Trump Trump shut down Cheyenne Mountain. That is, that's basically their opposition right there. That's our stronghold. Stop. Of and also, Cheyenne Mountain was connected to whatever the hell's under Maui. Wow. So they got to take that out. I don't know. They got to take out Cheyenne Mountain. See, I, I think these guys are not very sophisticated. <laughs> so I wouldn't do things this way, but I'm not a bad guy. Okay. But I think they have to do something that is energetic and psychologically captivating. It's the, and the second part of it uh, controls how much is the first part is used. They need so much energy into this that they capture our minds and hold them for a year. They want to get us into release language all, you know, in flux so that they can move us and control us for a year. And at Denver, Denver would be a target. Not just the airport, the whole damn, the, the whole place. Well, well, there's the thing with the directed energy weapons, they spread out as they're precise, but they're not like pinpoint, right? So they spread out in their effect. So just beaming it down in on the airport is probably going to do a lot of damage to the whole region. What may even affect all of Colorado for all I know. Because they got to go through. If they were going to get the Denver airport, they've got to get that huge layer on top. This has to happen. All right. And so, in my opinion, this would have to happen before April 3rd of next year. And again, in my yeah. opinion, I'm sorry? That's what Juanito says. He says the same thing, that the timeline for, okay, let me explain this. Let me just tell me if this adds up yeah. to you. The October testing of the national uh, emergency system is October 4th. He said that lines up with about six months out, which would be uh, November, December, January, February, March, April, April, which. Right. Okay. So it's a power number, a power time, April 4th. Right, here's, here's the deal about that. Okay. So that's correct. All of that's factual. There's another thing to take into consideration. Uh, these people are into the dark arts. Okay. Our, our enemies. All right. So bear in mind, we fight, uh, warlocks and witches. Um, so I'm a shaman. Okay. I know magic. I can do magic. I can do everything a warlock does. It's just, eh, you know, I got right. better things to do. Right. Um, so, but, so here's the thing. I know that, and I know that they must cooperate, uh, in their magic with cycles. So I'm not so sure that they would let it go beyond, uh, the first part of March. It's going to be much better for them to do it in the winter than it is in the spring. Um, just that's why uh, exactly. things happen in the fall, right? To set oh, us up so that they can magnify the winter effect on our minds and control us that much longer. But, you know how but, you feel in the winter. Right. Is that is it because it's so freezing? It's it's a, why would they do it in the winter? For okay, okay, because there's less light. All right. This is this really spooky, dude. We are light beings. Okay, so if you wrap yourself up in tinfoil, not only will you overheat, you will have a, a, a fantastic experience in your pineal gland as all of your biophotons are pushed back into your body. I do not recommend this, okay? It can, um, uh, but um, it is akin to a psychedelic without taking a drug. It is that powerful. We are light beings. We react to the sun. We react to light from the stars. We react to reflected light, et cetera, et cetera. In the winter, we have so much less because of the angles of the sun and stuff, especially up in the Northern Hemisphere. So they're going to try and harmonize. So what if I wrap myself in tinfoil and take a psychedelic? Oh, you wouldn't survive. No way. No way, dude. The, the, bigger, you, the bigger you are, the more biophotons you extrude. Okay. So <laughs> if, I'm sorry. Bigger you are, as I said, or what did you yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. The, the larger mass you have, the physical mass, whether it's fat or muscle, doesn't matter much. There's slight gain with muscle over fat, but you emit more biophotons, okay? So bigger people are going to suffer the effects, have a bigger trip, so to speak, than smaller, thinner people. Uh, it's just the way it works. You're just not going to get as much of this uh, bounce back into the pineal gland. Now, if your pineal gland is calcified, you're not going to feel very much. You just get overheated and you're going to throw up, right? Um, uh, and like I say, it can don't do this. But my point being that we are light creatures. And, <laughs> and look, dude, how, much, how many times have you been treated with light for your injuries? The red light pads, all of those kind of things, right? Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, come to think of it, yes. So, so, and you know, if you were to be like up in the Northeast in the winter, you know how you would feel, less light in the day. You don't care so much about the cold, but it's the light that impacts you. So I think these guys would harmonize. And so, of course, I'm thinking they're going to maybe do it before January-ish, right? Maybe it could get as far as February, but shortly thereafter, the angles don't favor them. The next time they would have an opportunity would be the next fall. I don't think they can survive that long economically. I agree. That's too late. Uh Juanito and I have talked about this, and we and and, uh, and I've had some other people on that. Every this this fall looks like a vertical jump in the drama. Are you seeing that as well? This fall, just because I'm saying it on yeah, my program. Yeah. Yeah. That's All that's the- what that release language is. Release language is Carrie Cassidy's drama that hit you the other day. She was like nine out of ten of her statements were release language. Yeah, that wet fish just slapping you upside the face. I mean, I could hear the blows over here while I was sweeping. Yeah, I'm abused. I'm abused, Cliff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. At least, you be... heal, at least you heal quick. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> so as this, so then what happens after that? So what so the release so as that happens and this event, whatever this event is, which you say is gonna be you your theory is it could be direct energy weapon, right? That makes the most right. sense. What happens? What's the aftermath of that? What do you have any kind of reading oh, on that? Okay, so all right, so they won't want it. Okay, the bad guys don't want you to know that this is part of the war, so they're going to have to do everything they can. So they are creating any warm temperatures that exist in their climate change model. That's all entirely hoaxed up, right? So we would expect a massive, massive, massive psychological operation, all focusing on. This being a natural occurrence of a meteor hitting us, they may even throw, you know, act of God, you want to, want to, want to, you get a meteor, you know, that kind of shit. They'll do everything, just pile on the psychological crap after this supposed meteor hits us. And then they're going to get on the case and be serious about it on any blowback that people would say it wasn't a meteor. But could it be maybe, could they play the alien card prematurely? Could they do that right now? Could that be the next thing? That's why they were so pissed about the Congress yesterday or the other day. Okay, so you know they... Oh, Mexican, yeah. Mexican Congress. Okay, but see, here's the thing. There was verbiage, uh, quite a bit of verbiage coming out of the Department of Defense that was, was saying all this is bogus. And it's like, why does our Department of Defense give a crap about what the Mexican Congress hears about space aliens? Maybe they care because they didn't want that whole shock value to be taken away from them. Got right? you. And it's already starting to spread around the planet. People are now starting to, to, to sell uh, space alien um, artifacts on eBay, that kind of thing. Not not the artifacts of the space aliens, but what the humans did in carving the space aliens that they interacted with, et cetera, right? So does this event, the, since you can foresee this coming, and I'm sure the White Hats can, the good guys can, we all can, now well, my audience can, now that we see this event coming, can we stop this? Or do we need to stop it? Or does it need to happen? Does I don't, happen? Okay, so, so there you go, dude. That's above my pay grade. That's a question for universe, all right? So I'm a doer in the body. My job is to, to do shit on this planet. To... So I'm not the thinker. I'm not the knower of information like that. So I don't know if, if enough of us were looking in Denver or looking at Cheyenne Mountain, would they do it? If enough of us say it's not going to be a nuke, it's going to look like a meteor, they're going to fake a meteor, they're going to do it directed at energy weapons, will they do it? What's his name? Just um, uh, said he isn't going to run uh, out of Utah. What, um, um, yeah. OK, so why did he do that? Because enough of us are looking at him and saying crime, crime, crime. OK, so if that and look at what's happened with the, the mother weapons themselves, the level of degradation is huge. Uh, the last uh, this, conference. This is a panic move that they have to play. They have to play this card. They have no right. choice. Right. Now, it could be stopped. Okay, not necessarily by you and me directly forming a a huge mass of people that are all looking at the same place, but maybe because we all get excited about something like this, maybe because we're all psychic and we're feeling something coming like this, our white hat guys uh, pay attention and go do shit. Okay, 
So this is this is kind of like the quandary that you faced the other day when when Carrie was hitting you with that mackerel. All right. Because she was she was saying that, you know, why didn't the interceptor platform stop it? You know, why didn't the military stop it? Well, we don't have interceptor platforms that for one thing, but (laughs) I know, guy, I know. (laughs) But anyway, though, so but you see my point here, right? I don't know if this has to happen. If it happens, then we must be moved by universe to fight fiercely any psychological stuff that comes on out, because maybe we'll break them right there. Maybe so many people will know in advance that they're going to fake up a meteor that when they come on out and say, oh, look, Denver just, airport just got hit by a meteor. Everybody and their brothers just going to erupt and it'll just be a giant riot on the internet and the planet and so on. And we'll get rid of them all. Wouldn't they have to use the MSM to to bring forth this problem? In other words, problem, reaction, solution. So wouldn't they probably, a month before the meteor hits, start putting it out on television and saying, ooh, it's coming, there's something, or was that? There's already been two of those. Really? Two, two new objects in our solar system, one from about three months back. I remember Lester Holt talked about a mothership that came into our solar system. Yeah, that's and and beyond all of this the space aliens and all of that, but I'm saying that there's two rocks they've identified. So maybe they've got their candidates lined up, right? Wow. So we could be looking at some kind of catastrophe that's going to surpass 9/11. An I mean, attack, an attack. It's not a catastrophe. An attack that they'll blame on nature, they'll have to blame it on nature, like some outside God, whatever. That will probably be an event that happens before April. It, yes. Looking, yes, that's what we're doing here. We're not psychic. We're just saying this is what it, this is our. No, your- no, no. We are psychic. Everybody that uh, gets on the internet and just types shit leaks out language because they're psychic and they don't have any other way to get it out. And I pick that up. And also, I talk to people that know they're psychic that have routines, that have rituals, or in the case of like the remote viewers that have, um, you know, uh, rigid protocols that have formality and that are successful and have a huge track record. And the psychics are saying some shit's coming at us. Now, I'm going to talk to Dick Allgaier uh, tomorrow afternoon, and he'll put it up on his site at some point, right? And he will show his drawings and these kind of things as to what he's got on this. And you go watch that, and then maybe you're going to want to interview Dick Allgaier and talk to him about that from his his viewpoint, right? Did you make that connection? You yes, I will. Uh, I, I will send you email. No worries. I'll tell Dick, et cetera, okay? He's in Hawaii, so, you know, you got time issues. Um, but um, uh, uh, so you need to personally ask him questions about what he saw, the formal, uh, how he did it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that you will be assured, as I am, that, you know, um, that he's in essence validating what I'm getting numerically. So bear in mind, what shocked me was not any particular kind of language coming through. It was the numeric sums that I run every damn time on this language in order to get the delta of the release versus tension to see if we're going to go into a building tension period or if we're going into release. Now, if I were to say it, I would suggest that an 81 level of a release value would last about a year. Could it be a coronal mass injection? Could it be a solar flare that they blame it on? Might be. I don't know what they're going to pick, but they're going to cause it. Because I, I've just seen some news on that. Yeah, like, yeah. Injection. And so maybe that's the, maybe they use that. Okay, well, see, that's that's a little difficult. difficult. And so here's their real problem, all right? So think of it this way. Um, if they use a directed energy weapon and slam into Cheyenne Mountain or any place in the United States, continental United States, right? doesn't matter where. But if they use a do and they do that, then what's Putin going to say? What are all these world leaders going to say when these fuckers say, hey, it's a meteor? Putin's going to say, no, we didn't, we didn't see anything coming in. All these other places are going to say, no, it's no meteor. We don't see shit coming in. You know, you guys are lying. And Putin, he's based. He'll call them liars to their face, Right. And all of us, and see, now we're at that point where they they probably, in my estimation, uh, are having uh, ambivalence about every single move they make 
and something this large is going to cause them many repeated trips to the toilet as they ponder this, right? Because it's going to release their bowels every time they think about the potential blowback on this because it's so vulnerable to their psychological operation not working. And here's the thing. So um, you're a professional fighter. Uh, have you ever had any fights that were not in a ring, not supervised? Yeah, many. Okay, so you know the feeling then as the situation evolves into a fight and how the language builds up in tension. And then at some point, it's no longer language. It shifts over into the physical, right? right. Okay, at the point that it shifts over into the physical, that's the point at which we enter into an area of the unknown. We don't know how it's going to come out, right? But we know that two things about this. There's going to be a, that the fight is on ongoing now and that the outcome is irreversible. You can't stop the fight in the middle and everybody go back to their positions. It's not, it's not organized that way. But so you will feel that, that issue of change, that, that state of flux go through your body. And I bet you, you felt it in your gut. You would feel a little bit of, of butterflies before you started getting moving, right? As the language is rising. Okay, so that's what's affecting them. And they've got butterflies like mad because it's going to be irreversible once they do it. And with an 81 value on my metrics, and that would go for a year, imagine what would happen. That would go for a year if we, if we had enough normies that believed them, if, if there was enough control mechanisms that they could put in. What would be the other side of that 81 value in release language? Hang them. Right. Right, which is going to happen anyway. But 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 no, there is that option. Okay, what I'm talking about is lynch mobs. Now, so I grew up in the South. Okay, Build the streets. This will be the big one. Right. So so if if they do this and they're not able to get enough normies to stifle the rest of the opposition to all the bullshit they're putting out because they need a certain mass of normies to be able to stand up to the rest of us saying, hang them, right? right? And if they don't, they'll be pulled out of airplanes. Their limos will be stopped on the road. Uh, people will decide I'm an assassin, I'm a hitman, and maybe they won't make it because of the security and so forth. But imagine Bill Gates being, uh, having his security people having, that's going to freak that motherfucker right out. They'll quit. They won't, they won't put their life in danger that much. They'll be done. He'll be uh, on his own. Okay, so no, so there's the problem, guy. All right, so it's estimated that one percent of the human population at any given time is a psychopath. Okay, so we have uh, three hundred and eleven millions in the in the U.S. That means we got three point one one million psychopaths. So there's a lot of psychopaths. They don't react the way that. And then there's this other group. It's estimated that there's three percent of the population are sociopaths. And a sociopath, eh, he'll go along with the psychopath. He'll the psychopath, right? Uh, so, so, but the, psycho, the sociopath, they're not wedded to this, this ideology that the psychopath has, and they'll, they'll flee. So I agree with you. Those people would not put their lives at risk. But I bet you Bill Gates got his security people out of that 3.1 million 